flag. Ready, Damon? Yes. Pledge allegiance to the flag. Roll call. Mr. Bordenero. Yeah. Mr. Fernandez. Yeah. Mr. Grady. Yeah. Mr. Holmes. Mr. Lamaglio. Yeah. Mr. Paradis. Here. Yeah. You have a quorum. Public comments. Approval of the May 11th regular meeting 2021. Motion, please. Make a motion to approve the minutes of the May 11th regular meeting 2021. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, new business. Jerry, let's move to Move to transfer $144,300 as detailed on the accompanying spreadsheet to cover higher than budgeted expenditures in identified accounts. I have a second. Second. Discussion. Anything in there, Kevin? Out of the ordinary? No. These are just <clears throat> most of them are personnel related, so changes, structural changes that happen that we're just kind of moving. Between departments, Look like some re more, more refunds, probably more refunds. We um, we had some settlements. There was a there's ambiguity in the law around um, around solar panels and personal property. There were actually 19 communities that were caught up in a question. The legislature this session is trying to clear up that matter. So the town was proactive and settled for uh, a fraction of returning the, the taxes rather than caught with a bigger amount. Here we go. The first one that said issue June 2020, what does that mean? Uh, oh, um, when we issue bonds, we issue, we identify the issue year. So in June of 2020, we issued the bonds. Typically, we would have paid, started paying principal in December. Um, you may recall when we talked about Eversource, made the decision to defer that one year in anticipation of potential tax settlements. Those have come to fruition. And so having that money. Instead of paying the bond, they allowed us to clear up those matters and pay for it next fiscal year. We'll start. The only other thing, I mean, it's minor, but I'm surprised that golf course ten thousand dollars more in credit card fee. They don't they don't use credit cards normally, or is uh, they do. What happened was um, during the pandemic, there was a heightened volume of golf. It was one of the few things that actually benefited, if you will, from the exactly. pandemic. Credit cards. And the Department of Economic Community Development established a number of standards, one person per card, and such thing. Cash was not permitted, and so people okay. were using cards. Sense. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number two. Move to approve a non budgeted appropriation of $92,605 from the outside police services account to the extra duty police officer account, both in the general fund. I have a second. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Number three. Move to approve a non budgeted appropriation of $24,881 for personal property taxes accounts in the general fund to contractual services in the assessor's department. Second. Second. Discussion. Kevin, this is. Um, Basically, because we got more revenue in, we have to pay out the company that did it? Yes, it's a, it's a contingent fee basis. So we pay them 30% of the first year collection only on cash taken in. So they have to identify, the assessor has to agree that the property was legitimate personal property and was not included. Then the taxpayer has to come forward and actually pay the bill. Then we pay this money. Um, we anticipated paying out a certain amount, and uh, the amount identified and collected exceeded that. So this is a fraction of 30% of the additional we collected beyond what we budgeted. So do we do this every single year? We do. Hey, guys. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four. Move to accept the tax collector's suspense list of $110,423.82. Second. Second. 
discussion. Okay. Okay. Before we go to number five, I want to add to the agenda discussion of visiting nurses. We have a town manager here. He gives us a report on what's going on. So, could I have a motion? I'll make a motion to add an item to the regular agenda to discuss and possibly take action on uh, the Visiting Nurse Association. I have a second. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. The town manager, what's going on with the nurses? It's all yours. Our nurses are doing really well. They're working very hard as usual, but uh, Thought I'll give you an update on where we are with the VNA and some of the conversations that we have had with the licensing authority. So, so before going out, we had talked about uh, a different structure, different model for the VNA. We thought it will be a good idea to go and speak with the licensing authority, which is the Department of Public Health. So they sent us a letter that provided the definition of, for a licensed home healthcare agency in the state of Connecticut, based on both the general statutes of Connecticut and regulations of the Connecticut uh, state agencies. So after we received the letter, we had some follow-up questions. So the Corporation Council and I had a call with the folks at DPH, most specifically the ones who worked with licensed home healthcare, probably five to six people on the call. And it was an opportunity for us to you know, ask questions and get clarification on what we were thinking and sort of do's and the don'ts before we go ahead and make any changes. So it, it, the letter was about two pages long, but there is a sentence in there which I would read, it says the, you know, agency in order for it to be a healthcare, licensed home healthcare agency, it shall provide, the agency shall provide professional nursing services and at least one additional service directly and all other directly or through contract. So home maker, home health aid services are defined as you know physical therapy, speech therapy, occupational therapy, or medical social services. So yeah, the but the nursing providing the nursing service itself has to be under the uh, VNA in order to maintain the, um, the license. So obviously if you get a third party to provide these services, we won't be licensed home healthcare agency and we won't be complying with the town charter at that point. So Jeff and I spoke after the call and um, you know, we had issued an RFP a few weeks before the holidays and we left it out for about 30 days to hire a consultant who might be able to provide some uh, alternative um, options to you know, reduce the cost, but at the same time, um, you know, comply with the town charter as well as the Connecticut general statute. So what I propose we do is, you know, I spoke to Jeff again, said, why don't we put it out again and um, drum it up a little bit, keep it out for about 45 days, you can make some calls to other towns with VNAs, some other experts who are in the industry and say, hey, there's an RFP out there. Uh, this is what we are looking for and see if we can get any traction on it. So that's where we are right now. Um, I'd be happy to take any questions. I have a question. Um, so are you going ahead putting the RFP out or do you need to get directions from the town council to put that out? Yeah, I mean, I, I checked with Kevin this uh, afternoon. I think I can go ahead and get an RFP out, but to hire a consultant, and especially if it's over $10,000, I'll need council to uh, approve that. But other than that, I, I don't think there's anything that prohibits us of the town from going okay, ahead and last, The last time I talked to you, you thought you needed something from the council to get going again. I don't think so. Kevin, correct me if I'm not stating it right. 
You're right. I mean, to, to put the RFP out, we do put a lot of RFPs out. Um, <clears throat> the funding is out these naturally in place as well. Within the general fund, there is professional services line in townwide. So, um, but to spend, if it's in excess of $10,000 to sign the contract, we would require council approval. So it is your intention to put out the RFP again? Yes. Can you give us a time frame? Well, I'll put it out in the next week or two. We already have the RFP, and I propose we keep it out for 45 days and see what we get. And Jeff will help me out with, uh, you know, reaching out to a lot of towns and just letting people know that it's out there and this is what we are looking for. Make some calls, and I can probably do the same thing as well. So, based on your discussion with the state people, if we did not have a charter requirement to have a VNA, what would, would there be anything out there precluding us from closing that agency down? Uh, the short answer is no, but there is a, a statutory requirement to provide um, health related, um, not home health care, uh, a way to provide health services to your residents. So, but you don't have to do that through a VNA. There are so many towns yeah, that exactly. provide that Most, without a VNA. My, my understanding, there's only two VNAs related to towns in the state, us and Orange. Um, I believe we did that, learn Westbrook as well, right, Arosh? Was it Westbrook uh, the other one? We learned I about? think so, but I have I'm not talking. confirmed that. Personally. Yeah, Orange is a one that, but that has a different like Orange is a consortium of towns. Yes, that's correct. Westport, West, Westbrook or Westport? Westbrook is what we're doing together. Westbrook. Westbrook. I got a question on this too. Are we are we actually now <clears throat> with the cuts that we made? Would you say we're at about minimum staffing now? I mean, our obligations under the charter and the state. Are we cut about as far as we can right now? Well, you know, if you speak with the folks who are familiar with this, they think, and we have an obligation to put the patient first. So, you know, if you, if you minimize, I'll give an extreme example that if you have only one nurse and there are more people calling that what we can handle, we need to have an alternative way of providing them or connecting to them to additional services. We have enough staffing to cover ourselves now. I'm sorry? Yeah. Sorry, do we know what the industry is standard? Like how many patients can one nurse carry? I don't know that. Because that would define, right? Yeah, that would. How many cases we have versus how many patients we have? Did anybody call Westbrook? I mean, what's their pro? What would they do? I mean, forget Orange or Westbrook. I mean, it's a small town. I mean, how they operate? Should maybe consult them and find out how they do things. Maybe we can learn, we can learn something from them. We have worked with Orange on a couple of occasions to learn, and that's part of the increase in per diem that we have because that's one of the ways that they're able to control their costs is utilizing more per diem or variable cost support. Um, back to Tim's question just for a second it's um, they can operate today, but I will tell you that there are people who are calling the DNA and are being turned away because of staffing challenges. Um, if with, with three nurses, for example, if someone is on vacation, you're down to two nurses. If someone then goes on workers' comp, gets sick, what have you, um, we may not be able to handle the caseload. And so the administration has to be very careful not to take on patients that we cannot provide appropriate care for. Um, the, smaller the, the smaller the staffing, the greater the risk that we could find ourselves in a position where even through no intention that we're just short staffed to be able to provide necessary care. And because it's because it's a healthcare agency, it's heavily regulated. And, and we have to follow the regulations, which is why Arosh and Jeff spoke with the, the state licensing. Are those cuts already made or was it effective July 1st? It will be effective July 1st. Uh, the health aide who was impacted had actually completed her nursing studies and found a full-time nursing position elsewhere. The other two will be affected by, uh, at least by July 1st. And the reason why I ask is because from a budget standpoint, I 
continue to underspend to their budget. So what does that mean? I mean, so they should have now had enough people at least to June, June 30th to support the need, the you know, community needs, at least for this fiscal year. Maybe not next fiscal year. But I understand what you're saying, but you know, isn't there a limit to community? I mean, if every person in town came to the VNA, we could not certainly take care of everyone, right? We have budget constraints on every other department in town. Um, we can't just be sitting here saying, if more people come, we're gonna hire more people and lose more money. I mean, it's just a ridiculous, situation to put ourselves in to say we will keep taking on everything and losing more if anyone's looked at their financials for this year we're, we're approaching nine hundred thousand dollar loss for this year i mean tell me any other department that we would be allowing this to happen without um you know to, to me it's like okay let's let's just bite the bullet and say, okay, we're gonna lose money on this, but okay, operate with one nurse and the rest per damn people and we'll lose $500,000 and we'll save $400,000. I mean, we're still providing a service to the community. There's no less services out there for the community because there's so many other agencies that are doing this that people will be served. I mean. I just don't understand how we can keep looking at this year after year after year and taking on more losses year after year. And it doesn't bother anybody. Well, I don't know that it's fair to say it doesn't bother anybody. Well, I mean, we, I mean, we're not taking any action on it. Well, we also do have charter limitations here. For example, you, you, if you were to take the same P&L viewpoint, the library would lose a million dollars. I don't think anybody views it as a loss. It's a service that people want. Um, but you you would say that there's no private libraries doing the same service. That's the difference. I'm sorry? That's the difference. There's no private libraries doing the same. Well, I'm not saying service. you have to have it. I'm saying if that they had you had libraries in, private, in the private sector, then it would be foolish to keep the library open, too. Exactly. Right. But you have a charter. And, and oh, I guess that's the thing. That's why my question But the charter does right. not say there's an unlimited checkbook. It does not. Um, but rather than going back and forth the, the the best alternative would be to put it out to the voters propose a charter revision to remove it and if the voters say no we want to keep it we're willing to pay for it then they're willing to pay for it and if they're not and they say fine take it out then you take it out <laughs> um okay yeah, <laughs> okay so as long as you're going to move this rfp forward I mean, that's, you know, to me, we can't just talk about it at budget time and then not get get forced up against the wall where we can't make decisions because we don't know this or that or what the repercussions of cutting a couple positions are versus whatever. But I mean, to me, it's, it, it seems that, you know, I, I think the lesson I learned from last time, last budget was if we're not going to do anything and, and I said, if I personally think we should, then we're going to have to look at some way of cutting specific personnel to reduce their level of service. Nobody says what level of service we have to be at, just that we have to provide a service. So let that be the best step. We, we made some cuts this last time, so let's see what direction we headed. I know, I know, but it, it came down to, like you said, last minute. Yes. And we're, we're button heads with the charter. Yep. And, and the state and nobody had answers at that at that minute we had to make a decision, so we can't just let it slide this time. We have to just stay on top of this. Um, maybe, maybe we should call Westbrook. How about that, they're a small town. Let's find out how they operate. Let's find out if they're operating at a loss so if they're breaking even because there's orange big. I mean, we can't really compare to orange. I mean, they're, not, they're bigger than us. Westbrook's a small town, or Westport, Westbrook, or whatever. Am I correct? I mean, you're a small town. Like, am I wrong? Am I right or wrong? Oh, well, there's one. They could be comfortable with operating at a loss. No, but I mean, let's find out. 
So if, even if it's a if it's a small loss, well, you know that's good too. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, Kevin made a good point. I mean, if we're going to look at everything, library, park, rec, I mean, you know, they don't, you know, we don't expect a municipality. We're not in the business to make money. You know, it'd be nice to break even in certain things. But the municipality is not in the business to make money. No, but we're not in the business. business to be competing with the private. No, sector. but I mean, it's if they try the same service or better, and we're doing it just to lose money. I'm going to tell you guys: if you think this is going to pass in a charter, good luck because it's not. It's just not. I mean, people like the BNA, and, and they just do. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't. I know they're losing money, but I mean, there's a personal relationship with the BNA, and my family has a personal relationship with the BNA. I mean, I can tell you they. They just do. My neighbors have the BNA now, and they have a. I asked the, the daughter, "How do you like the BNA?" And I asked her, "You know, they're losing money." She, said, "I really don't care because they take care of my mother," and, and this is what we're. But I mean, it's a personal thing. A BNA is a personal thing. It really is. Okay, so I I think maybe if we can call Westbrook, put it like Jerry said, put it out to bid. But I think it'd be nice if you. Somebody makes a call to Westbrook, talk to the finance guy, find out, you know, how do they do things? Are they operating at a loss? I mean, maybe they're not. Maybe they're doing something differently than we are. Maybe we can, we can learn something from them. It doesn't hurt to make a phone call. It doesn't hurt to ask any questions. Maybe we can compare what they're doing and what we're doing. I mean, obviously, financially, we're probably, you know, I don't know if we're doing it right or wrong. I really don't. I mean, I know, we, you know, we're losing over, what, $900,000? That's a lot of money. It is a personalized service that the town offers. And I know being on the charter revision, and when we were talking about that change, I'll tell you, that room was packed. Nobody likes to go to a charter revision meeting, and we were like stunned. I mean, we had every senior citizen in that room, and everybody, it was downstairs of the Board of Finance room, we almost had to move the meeting, and everybody did not want that to be changed. That was our decision that we left it alone because we were gonna, we were gonna make the change. But at the time, nobody knew they were losing over a million dollars a year either. I, I yeah, I'm so gonna you, you present that. Yeah, but if you're going to campaign against the visited nurses and, and no, we're no. Just, what we're going to do is let the voters decide. It's not, it's not campaigning. But you know it's what? Not, it's it's not, educating, it's educating, I know, I, it's I, okay. educating the people. Right, right, but I'm just telling you, there's a personal relationship. You educate the I agree with you. You could educate. You're telling them it's going to be transparent by another organization taking them over eventually. So you know, it's you got to educate the people. There's a loss. I agree with you. It be a transparent transition. You can educate me. No, I'm not that. against it. I'm just saying that if we can fix it, to do a charter revision is a big gamble. I'm going to tell you right now. It's a big gamble. I served on two charter revisions. It's a lot of work. It's a big gamble you're going to take. There's, you, once you do a charter revision, it opens it up to everything. And you have everybody on that charter revision, even though you interview them, they all come with a different idea. And then all of a sudden you got something that you really don't want and it gets put out to the voters and then you got problems. It, it, it just doesn't, I served on two of them and I'm telling you, it's not, it's a lot of work. It's not as easy as everyone thinks it is. And um, I, I followed the charter revision last time. I was not on it, but being the town's auditor, I followed yeah, it. It's a lot of work. People have, everybody I talk to, nobody has any idea no, that I they agree. lose as much money as they lose. I agree. We knew so, they were losing money. I, mean, I, I agree with with Sal and, and Tim that, that this is as much an education thing as anything else. That if people decide, okay, we don't care if our taxes, you know, uh, are are staying up artificially by a nine hundred thousand dollar expenditure, almost half a mil, uh, you know, and then so be it. But. I think people have to know what the real cost is. Yeah, no, I agree. With you. I, I agree. I stay. I had a crash course in home services for my father. I think I think yeah, how it works. How the department of how it works. I think people love the idea of the DNA, but they have no idea how it works and what other substitutes are out there. I think it needs to be out there. But well, let's call it a sport. Maybe that's doesn't hurt, does it? No. Okay. We all said. Can I just have one Go question, ahead. maybe for the next meeting? Yeah, Go ahead. But in April, we talked about the lighting upgrade program, the million, million and a half, whatever. And we're going to follow up to see, you know, what the pro forma would actually look like and 
it's supposed to be a net zero you know cost i guess can we look at that next month or whatever mm -hmm. as we said if we went far with the million five right we, we want a little more detail with respect to the program that was part of the agreement yeah but i do as you so okay it's yeah, it's all yours uh I only have two updates and then I'll open it up to any questions. First, we did have another person uh, file papers to, to retire for the pension. Um, oh, DB pension. Yeah. Um, he filed his paperwork May 29th. So he's going through the process with the actuaries to determine the final payout amount. We have the funds at Prudential to pay him out. However, that it doesn't wipe us out, but it doesn't put us in a position where we have enough to pay out anybody else who is working. So the council meeting next Tuesday, um, there will be a town meeting to appropriate essentially the balance of the actual determined contribution. So you would include $185,000 for the monthly annuitants and the fees. This would put us at the next level. That will give us just enough money for two more retirements. We'll have some money there. My goal in doing that, well, Assuming that it passes at the town meeting and from the council, you'll get that in your July meeting. The intent of getting us to that point is both the board and the council typically do not meet in August. So I wanted to be in a position where uh, if we had a retirement or two in July or August, I'd be in a position to be able to pay them out without having to call an emergency meeting and try to gather you guys together in August to approve. Um, we had, as I mentioned before, five people request payout amounts. Uh, this is one of those five who elected. We do have four others. Um, I think it's highly likely that we're going to see two and maybe even three of those leave during this calendar year. Um, if that were to happen, or if we were to even get one or two of those, I will be coming back asking for additional money just again to maintain the balance. The positive news is with this retirement, that drops you down to seven active participants in the plan. So we are continuing to see liability and the numbers decline. Obviously, the assets are going with it, but we're paying it out. We're not financing it through bonds. We're not uh, pushing things down the road. We're dealing with it. We're paying it out. And uh, unfortunately, it means we're also losing some very good officers, police force, but uh, the chief and his team and the police commission, I'm sure, will work through that quickly. To, to replace the officer we lost. The only other thing I would draw your attention to. Question on that one. Oh, yeah. So he, he filed, or he or she filed May 29th. Is that payout going to be before June 30th? It should be, yes. Yes. Okay. What happens is before the end of the month, um, if you file before the end of the month, the actuary typically takes about a week to two weeks to get the final 30 year treasury rate first of the following month. So he went on May 29th, they'll use the June 1st rate, calculate the final amount. The paperwork will be sent back through HR to the participant. The quicker he signs it, sends it back, it then goes to, uh, to Prudential, who is our, who holds our assets. And they will ultimately pay out the participant. The second part is we did get final numbers for the American Rescue Act. Huh. So the town between the town share and the county share, it's six million forty-eight thousand dollars. Six million forty-eight thousand. How much? Six million forty-eight thousand forty-six dollars and sixteen cents. Um, you've already appropriated seven hundred thousand of that in the budget for FY twenty-two. Um, I am. I've attended a number of webinars, including the CCM, GFOA, National League of Cities, and many others. I have read through the 151 page treasury guidance document. There are specific parameters. Um, they're not onerous parameters. You don't have an unlimited use of the money, uh, but there are a number of uses. So uh, the town manager and I, I spoke and uh, what I would like to propose, and, and what we would like to propose is a joint meeting between the council and the board of finance, probably in September. You have until December 31st, 2024 to obligate the money, and December 31st, 2026 to spend the money. So it's not a limitless amount of time, but it is a good amount of time. And my recommendation is that, that move 
deliberately. So not slowly, we don't get a sales pace. There's no need to rush. Um, half the money is to be received within a couple of weeks. We had to certify with the state the money for non-entitlement units, which is any community under 50,000 population, which Berlin falls in most communities in Connecticut. The money goes from the feds to the state and the state passes it directly through. It is just a pass through, but um, I completed the certification process today. So we should get that probably last week of June it will hit our bank account. I'm gonna dedicate that money into a separate capital project fund. The court is on our revenue, it won't be a fund balance or anything. Um, and it, it will sit there until it's appropriated. The reason for the joint meeting is it requires both the council and board of finance to do any non budgeted appropriation. So we'll have half of the cash. The next half will come a year later. So we should expect it in June of 2022. Um, if you take the 700,000 out, that leaves you with $5,348,000, a good amount of money to do a number of things. The, the key overriding feature is it needs to either be to um, address issues that happened as a result of the COVID pandemic. So it could be for small businesses or individuals who are facing challenges, could be for not-for-profits, things that were impacted by COVID-19, or actions taken to address a potential next COVID-19, a future pandemic, so ventilation upgrades or those types of things that are really tied into COVID. So again, there's not, it's not, you don't have unlimited use of this money, but there are a good number of uses. So we'd like to get together in September and have a meeting where you could take an opportunity to kind of lay out what are those parameters, propose some ideas from staff that we have, and then give the board and the council an opportunity to kind of walk away, think about those ideas, think about other ideas. You may have some really great ideas that we didn't even think of for the use. Um, and then, as I said, to, to be deliberate. It doesn't have to be one big thing. It could be several things. Or it could be one big project that really does address this. At more than $5 million, that is a substantial amount of money. Um, and for me, being the finance person that I am, I'm happy that it's not reimbursable. They're actually going to give us the cash so we don't have to front it and ask for it back. Um, the one thing we have to be cautious of is we won't get direction up front. We'll get approval up front from Treasury that says, yes, that counts, whatever we decide to do. If we decide to do something and Treasury ultimately decides that was not a proper use of the money in compliance with what we set as the rules, we would then, the community would then have to reimburse the money to the feds. So we do want to be careful to follow their parameters. Um, so put those two things out there and then if you guys have any questions. So the meeting is what brings some of my ears with some. Well, the meeting would be first and foremost to level set with both the council and the board of finance and the public, whoever wants to attend, on the program, the parameters that were established, um, you know, what can the money generally be used for? And then to put forward some ideas that we have based on <clears throat> the capital project plan, based on uh, emerging needs. The Treasury, CCM, GFOA, many others have all been very clear. This is intended to be uh, town money. That does not mean it cannot be spent on, on school items, but there is a separate pool of money that is being directed right to the Board of Education. As well. You know what the dollar amount is? I don't have that specific amount. It wasn't being, uh, that was a part of the shared out. At the time, it was a little over $800,000. Oh, so, so give me what we know about the guidelines right now. We wanted to move the timeline of the fire trucks, for example. Would that be in the categories first responder? Um, possibly that is a gray area there. I do know that there is another town in Connecticut that was contemplating using the money to purchase an ambulance. And the initial guidance was that doesn't qualify. They're trying to get further guidance from Treasury as to whether it might and how it might. So I'm following that to see how they, that plays out for them because I think it would fall in the same vein. You know, obviously I mentioned last time, one thing you could consider is as the Public Building Commission comes forward with final plans on the uh, HVAC system upgrades at the elementary schools, that would qualify its ventilation. It, it's really right in the sense of what they're trying to go after for the long-term benefits. Well, the ventilation systems for PD too. That would qualify. Absolutely. That should qualify, right? Yep, absolutely. 
um, some of our problems. So this is this is why we want to have the meetings kind of setting the parameters and then having an opportunity to put ideas on the table, but also hopefully engage the public. I mean, this is a good amount of money that can be used to do a lot of good for the community. And, um, you know, as I mentioned last time, some a project that we might otherwise bond, there is also the ancillary benefit of avoiding debt costs going forward. So you can have benefits of project being completed and financial benefits uh, for the community. So that's why I think we want to be deliberate with what this is and engaging both the Board of Finance and the Council, because whatever we do has to be approved by the majority. Maybe we could even, I mean, maybe the fire trucks wouldn't work, but I know they were talking about on the capital plan, some of this personal safety equipment too. So personal safety know, equipment definitely would that, work. You know what I'm saying? That might work there because they were, yeah, we had some pretty good needs there. Yeah. You know. That's a good idea. Yeah. And I think you're going to find as, as you need, as you talk with more people, I'm sure people, once word gets out about the money and what's happening on probably will not be a shortage of people who will approach many of you with ideas. And, and that's what we ultimately want is what, what are the, what's the best use of this money for the community at this point in time? Um, so that was the idea we wanted to put out there. Also, that we're talking about on that, did you know that the, they're coming up with this big thing about the community center slash senior center? Because it's sent to the town council. I don't know what it was last month or whatever. One of the, the chairman of Park and Rec, what's her name? Donna Bobay. Donna Bobay wants to set up a committee. She's asked the, the council to have a representative, but she failed to realize that they need board of finance approval. So I would like somebody on the board of finance to be part of that committee. Community center and that, so we could have some ideas of what's going on because eventually it's going to come to us. I think we should know price tag, what the plan is, and everything. So we could have the town manager inform Don Bobay that a board of finance member should be on that committee. That would be really great. And one of you guys can decide whoever wants to be on it. That would be really great too. So I think we should have somebody on that committee too, since it's coming to us. Eventually, I don't yeah. know when, but eventually it might come to us. I think when the final price tag is thrown out, yeah, it's not, the yeah. rate's going to be, I think that's going to go away real fast. Oh, I agree with you. But since they're having this committee, I think we should be on too. And, we, yeah. and then we can express, like, yeah, yeah explain that that's, that's how the real it's world is. A, yeah, what the real world is, because I don't think it's going to pass. I anyways. listened to the town council meeting, and I don't think some of those people were on it. I mean, what's the real world? It was just unbelievable. Got an idea what the price tag was going to be. They're talking 25, 30 million, but that. Looking at the building with an indoor pool, like two indoor pools. If you haven't taken, if, right. you, if you haven't, um, Those for therapy, haven't visited, for competition. What they have in hospitals for superior pool. That's, I'm telling you what the plans are. There's two pools. Right, so that's what I mean. I think it's important when somebody on the board of finance is there and expect yeah. the reality of life here. Don't you agree, Tim? Yeah, maybe you can be the one. Oh, know, please. <laughs> or Sal. You already, you already got me off it. Or you're working. I mean, I don't want to do it. So, what do you guys want to do it? Because I think it's just. Well, if you haven't visited on the town website, there is a link to QA and M, who are the architects for this. They have uh, there's a, a video. It's it's a really well done video. I think a really well thought out community senior center. You're right. The price tag for a well thought out community senior center is, um, you know, to, to build it is substantial, and the ongoing operating cost certainly will be a. But two pools will be an ongoing cost. It, yes. it would be much more costly than what we have today. We were talking around $3 million a year operating expenses. That's but it is a, a well done or uh, video. If you haven't yeah. seen it, it's on the web, on the um, town website. If you can inform the town manager for yeah. a product, we'd like to have a representative mm -hmm. on it. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Other than that, I don't know, that's going to be my hack. So, Cornerstone West Hartford has two pools. High schools use it, and they got to a point where they kind of like can't do anything about this, and they have to hire a separate company to come in and kind of do it. Itself. He's went out, they had to do a lot of construction, a lot of fixing up. It's a big, it's, it's a big, big thing. Yeah. Pools wear out very quickly and they need a lot of maintenance very often. Yeah. I mean, we have all we can do with the two town pools. Yeah. And they're, they're only open eight weeks. That's right. They might not even open this year. No lifeguards. Probably cheaper to cover those pools up. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we got anything else? Um, yeah, I, I, I just like to revisit the American uh, Rescue 
uh, issue, the 700,000 that we have in the fiscal 22 budget. Do you anticipate any issues with us earning that within that budget structure? I do not. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the options is that communities have the opportunity under this plan, unlike the previous coronavirus relief funds, to use the money to offset lost revenues. Um, there's a whole methodology of basically an assumed growth rate of baseline. Uh, Treasury did a really good job, and I'm not sure why, but at the end they decided that the fiscal year that they would use ends on 1231, which is nobody's fiscal year for communities. Um, I believe that the community lost more than that revenue between interest, BNA, Parks and Rec. Um, I believe we lost more than that revenue. The lost revenue can be used for a number of items. It's not unlimited, but it can be used for uh, public safety officials, it can be used for health officials. So if we were to identify that, and, and what I would argue to Treasury is the amount of revenue that we lost 700,000 is replacing that revenue and has been dedicated to public safety officials. The cost of the police department personnel exceeds $700,000. So that alone could be identified as an area where we chose to appropriate $700,000 and apply it. That would be my argument. I think there's merit to that based on what I've been, the numbers I've run, but also the seminars that I've been on talking about this. Okay, uh, it, it, it can actually be and it would be measured by your revenue loss of the property. It's, it's against a baseline, which was the last full fiscal year before the coronavirus hit. So fiscal year 18, 19. And then you fold, fast forward 18 months, 12, 31, 2020, take the 12 month period of basically the calendar year of 20, and then do the same for 22, three and four. Okay, one final question. You and I had just briefly we didn't fully flush it out, but we were talking about um, you contacting the town auditors about putting that money yep. to that in the general fund. Did yep. you have that discussion? I did. Um, the auditors are rec they um, they agreed with putting it in another fund. They are advising their all of their clients not to put it in the general fund. Very much for the same reason, it's it would end up. Because we received this money in the last few days of June, it would by default fall to fund balance. You're going to create a lot of noise going forward. Um, their recommendation is keep it separate, which is what I'm proposing, and we'll record it as unearned revenue. So it will not go to fund balance, it will sit there. And then once the Council and Board of Finance have decided where the money, will, how the money will be used, it will get appropriated. I'm proposing to put it in a capital project fund because that's already a major fund for us. <laughs> and therefore it's, it's not going to um, create a new major fund with our special revenue funds. Uh, but I do intend to create a new American Rescue Plan fund. So the money will be deposited and will be kept separate. And then if we use it for capital projects or acquisitions, I would do it through that fund. So all of the revenue and the expenditures would sit there I mean, again, we could be spending this money until 2026, theoretically. Um, and so to make it easier over the course of years to maintain records and be able to go back when Treasury audits us, uh, that's the plan. I, I think that's important background for everyone here that you're not just choosing to take it out of the general fund because we don't want to show up bloated. You know, someone could say, oh, you, you know, you're doing it because you don't want to show how much money we have or whatever, but there is um, practice, practical practice uh, behind the decisions that are being made, you know, to, to do it in a certain way here in the capital project funds. It's a little bit of a to this idea this year. That lasted for a while. You, you weren't around back then. Well, how much money was in the tender account? It was exclusively for the mayor. <laughs> yeah. And it was, it was called the tip account, believe it or not. The state set it up for our municipalities years ago, and that lasted a long time. Did, just on the financial report, do you have an estimate of where we're going to finish the year, fund balance wise? Fund balance wise? Yeah. I, I think the general fund. I think we are a 
around break even, to plus or minus uh, plus three hundred thousand. I think we're going to if I had to hang a number, it'd be around three hundred thousand surplus. Um, in that number, I'm assuming nothing from the board of ed. Uh, that doesn't mean that I have some information that they're spending all their money. I'm just I never project what they're going to say because. Uh, but that includes the first million of the COVID money. No. Oh, it doesn't. No. It does include the, the CRF grants we did receive earlier in the year that reimbursed us for expenditures. Okay, but not, not the, the not first this month in the, the June. Okay. Well, so okay. that, that one's going to go into capital projects. Well, if we get some extra money, the Board of Ed, or if we get any extra money from the town, maybe we should consider buying some capital that we did now. We have been discussing a few things that we think um, should be considered. Yeah, we should put a list together. We'll talk about it next week. But yeah, we have that. <laughs> we have a list. When, so you think it'll be a lean report? Um, they're meeting. I'm not exactly sure why, but the meeting was delayed till next Monday. It was regularly scheduled for that. I'm just not sure why. Typically, it's the Monday meeting before ours. So I expect to get it about Thursday of this week. So if I get it on Thursday, Send Friday, I will email it out as soon as I get it. Send it to us, and then we'll all get together in July and discuss whatever. And the meeting, I believe the meeting next month falls in the same sequence. So we should get it just before our meeting because their meeting will be the Monday before. That's the only reason we didn't have it. It's the middle of the week later. Okay, then we'll talk about it. Okay, anything else? Anybody? Nobody? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, David.